Shadow Opposition Spokesman Lysia Cairns. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And can I start by welcoming the Secretary of State and his shadow team to their places? They take up their roles in one of the greatest offices of state, uh, who are committed to shaping the future and the safety of our country. And that is, after all, the foremost duty of our government. I'd also like to take this opportunity to put on record my thanks to Lord Cameron, Lord Ahmed, and of course the Shadow Foreign Secretary for their steadfast determination towards ending this conflict, their humanity that they displayed when faced with a situation of untold horror. And I'd also like to thank them because in my previous role as Chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, they kept both me and both opposition front benches fully updated, and I'm sure the Government will continue with this collaborative approach. I also thank the Minister for advance sight of his statement, although I cannot say that it prepared me fully to find myself on the front bench this Friday morning. <laughs> the Right Honourable Gentleman will know the extensive work we undertook in government following the horrific terrorist attacks suffered by Israel on the 7th of October and the crimes against humanity suffered by her people. I welcome his visit to the region. Mr Deputy Speaker, Israel did suffer an appalling terrorist attack. It was the deadliest in their history. And as we said from the outset, Israel has the right to defend itself in accordance with international humanitarian law. And we must remove Hamas's capacity to launch attacks against Israel. As the Right Honourable Gentleman rightly sets out, the situation in Gaza is desperate. Too many Palestinian civilians have been killed. We continue to see strikes on humanitarian infrastructure, and the humanitarian situation is unforgivable. The Index on Famine states that Gaza is now in just that, full famine. And I saw this when I went on my own visit to the Egyptian border with Gaza and met with families who had had to be evacuated due to the severity of the harm caused to them. We need an immediate end to the fighting and to secure the release of the hostages, whose families continue to suffer unbearable torment on a daily basis. So can he please provide an update to that House on reassurances he has received on the safety of those hostages? On aid, has he secured any reassurances in his meetings to increase the number of trucks going into Gaza? Because 70 odd a day is just not enough. In government, we did everything we could to urge Israel to let more humanitarian aid into Gaza, opening more crossings, whether through RAFA, we trebled our own aid commitment within the last financial year, doing everything we could to get aid there by land, sea or air. We had success in getting the Ashdod port open, as well as Karim Shalom as well as helping in 11 airdrops into Gaza and creating a field hospital. The UK aid funding to UK Med has treated thousands of patients. We also supported and helped set up a maritime aid corridor to Gaza. Now he announces today the return of funding to UNRWA. Can he please advise the House on the timeline for this and also provide assurances that taxpayers' funding will be directed with due regard? Now only an end to the fighting will enable a significant scaling up of humanitarian aid. Now, Right Honourable Gentleman rightly states that Biden set forward a proposal backed by Israel and the UN Security Council to end the hostilities. So what action is the Right Honourable Gentleman taking to move that proposal forward? Can he also provide us with any reassurances he has secured in his meetings with Netanyahu? He also rightly raises the case of extremist uh, settlers. We put in place sanctions against some of those extremist settlers, one of the first governments to do so. So can he assure us that he raised this issue with the Israeli government and whether more sanctions will be forthcoming? Now, the risk of escalation remains high, particularly with Hezbollah in Lebanon. So can I please ask, following the sham election of the Iranian president, whether his department assesses any change in Iranian intent, activities or funding? When he sat on these benches, both the Right Honourable Gentleman and the now Home Secretary were crystal clear that they would prescribe the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps would they be in government. So can we please now have the timing for this prescription? We all want to see an end to this devastating situation, which threatens the stability and security of so many. As His Majesty's loyal opposition, our priority will work with the government, but also to challenge and scrutinise you as needed. But ultimately, we on these benches can assure you we will always work in the national interest because it is foreign policy that keeps our people safe at home, and that is our foremost duty. Yeah. Yeah.